Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Tiffany, a retired librarian turned homeschool mom. And in this video, we're going to look at an interesting book. We're going to switch to nonfiction here. So this is Coast to Coast Ghosts, True Stories of Hauntings Across America by Leslie Rule. And it's forwarded by her mother, Anne Rule, who apparently I've never read her stuff, but she's known for true crime novels. So that's the mother. So this is an interesting book. I'm not big on scary stories, despite the fact that I'm covering the uh, Last Apprentice series. So uh, that's kind of what's going on a little bit right now. Normally I steer clear of horror. I do, however, like true haunting stories. I like the history behind them. And that's what this is. This is a book that talks about people's real life experiences with different hauntings and whether there are ghosts or not. It, it's up to, it, it's a matter of opinion and it's not scientifically proven, I'll admit that. But this tells the story of people's real experiences, things they've seen, things they've felt. It starts off with, besides the introduction, it starts off with the first chapter here. It starts off with a couple of different stories of um, haunted homes. So it talks about different experiences they had, the rules had um, they lived in an old family home, so they experienced in hauntings. Then it talks about littlest ghosts, where it's talking about children. You have a variety of different stories about child ghosts. As far as I know, most of these stories aren't malevolent. Um, though when I briefly looked through this, it's been a while since I've read one of the houses the families left before apparently the ghost got violent. Sometimes it talks about the history. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it brings up different psychics. Um, that have experienced things. Again, whether you believe in that or not, it's entirely up to you. It's interesting to read about. Um, then you have school spirits, which talks about different, basically spirits that are in either in schools themselves or are probably most likely things that used to be schools. Some of these are longer, some of these are shorter. So let's see if I can move back. It talks about a little bit of poltergeist throughout the book. She has these little inserts here that talk about different things. This one, uh, Three Little Ghosts of St. James, which probably is a cemetery. So the school spirits. So yeah, sometimes these are actual schools, but sometimes they're pretty much just old buildings where tragedies occurred. And schools were often witnesses to various generation upon generation of trauma. It happens. And basically of things that people have died in schools. So that's what it tells the sale of. So you have those stories. There's a couple. Then it talks about paranormal pets because you can't have a book without paranormal pets. Um, and it does list, yeah, the end here, dozens of haunted, haunted campuses. So. Apparently Washington University in Seattle is haunted um, because from the College Inn pub. It's haunted by a ghost of a man who was murdered by visiting the campus decades ago. Green Mountain College in, looks like Poultrony, Vermont. Um, lonely ghost, he worked at the school and died of illness in the attic where he lived. Uh, University of Minnesota, Minneapolis. Um, Apparently people have seen mysterious howling her near the Walter Library and unseen presences. Uh, apparently through a phone book, you know, when people use those in one of the halls. So, and apparently Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut. Not really surprised that's haunted. It's been around for a very, very long time. A couple different things. What else? There's a couple more. There, it's Vassar. Another one of those schools that's been around. This one of the Seven Sisters has been around for a while. Uh, and a couple more. So you can always look at these. Strangely enough, none of my, well, my state's too young. So then you have paranormal pets. Interesting little thing about various different animals. There's stories about seances here, summoning the dead or spirits. No, I don't recommend it. Yes, I had a Ouija board as a teenager. Um, I've long since gotten rid of the dumb thing. I don't wanna mess with those. Uh, as I always say, don't invite trouble, whether you believe it in believe in it or not. Various different animals. Um, apparently six places it has one of those lists that break these things up. Six places you can see ghostly animals. 
Clifton, Arizona. Strangely enough, I've never been to. Uh, pet Cemetery, Los Angeles, California. Well, it's a pet cemetery. Melton, Alabama. Newberry, South Carolina. Apparently there's haunted. Casper, Wyoming. And then Port Tobacco, Maryland. Places to see haunted pets. So then you have a ghost trilogy. So kind of like stories of various ghosts that come in threes. So and of course she has various photographs in here. So this is a very, very good book. Um, can go back through. Uh, Until We Meet Again, probably love stories. It's been a while since I've read this. Um, yeah, basically people who have unexpected goodbyes, which is always sad. And again, known for ghosts. Lovers are pretty common ghost stories. So that's actually a very short chapter. Some of these are longer, some of these shorter or shorter. Angel ghosts. Um, I'm guessing these are stories about ones that have been protecting. Uh, ghosts that protect you and save your life happens um, periodically. So let's see. And again, there's sometimes these are only just a couple pages. Ghosts that float. I'm guessing these are water things. Yeah, these are talking about river ghosts and ocean ghosts. And yeah, watery graves, Brookdale Lodge, uh, Brookdale, California. Uh, that's a hotel. I've seen haunting stuff about one little girl who's in there. I don't even know if it's still open. Um, Redding, Pennsylvania, that's a place for watery graves. Um, St. Joseph, Louisiana, the cemeteries along the Mississippi. Bellbrook, Ohio, and then Bowers Beach, Delaware. Various different people who died in this died in rivers. Um, Ghost Rush. I'm guessing this is talking about various different things. Yeah, gold. Well, there again, it's a, it's a very interesting book. There's lots of photographs and pictures here. So, old cemeteries, old pioneer cemeteries. I'm a believer. Various different tales. People who are so that's really yeah there's a couple more chapters in here uh, let's see and again it has these little inserts here so it kind of breaks up the story sometimes to give you more information and different things uh, haunted hotels always fun if you're looking for hauntings I love the histories of these things so it talks about various different hotels hotels are big places where there are hauntings because um, the Baltimore which I Think. Apparently, it was a hospital at one point. At one point in time, um, uh, twelve haunted hotels. So again, she has some of these lists in here, which are always interesting. You can always look at them. Let's see. But again, it shows various pictures of hotels here. So and then let's see. Ice on the balmy breeze. So cold places. Basically, free, ghosts are known to cold spots. That's one of the other ones that they do. So, and then through the eyes of baby of babes, children are known to see hauntings. They see things that we don't, supposedly. Yeah. Um, and see, children point things out. So this is basically stories of children that have seen ghosts. And then nomadic ghosts. Um, so some, this is apparently ghosts that follow people. Slightly creepy. Um, I think that's the last one. No, Songs for the Dead, which I think is the last chapter. So this is talking about different um, event spaces like theaters. And then who could forget the Alamo? Um, apparently, yes, we're going to the actual last picture. The last thing on this is the Alamo and then America's Most Haunted, which is the last chapter in here. So, and various different things about different haunted places. So that's it for this review. This is kind of a brief look at this book. Um, this is mine. So this is something I've had for a while. I've actually read through it. It's just kind of been a while and I don't have the time to go back through it. 
uh, because of toddler. So this is the book I highly recommend if you're looking for something that's more haunted history as opposed to ghost stories. So this is more realistic, people's real experiences, whether you believe in hauntings or not. But it's a great book, uh, age range, probably middle school to high school. You might be able to read some of these tales to kids, but one, be careful, read them beforehand. Um, as I say with pretty much most of my books. But yeah, middle to high school. This is a good book if you're looking for authentic, haunting history books and actual events and different things that isn't promoted by a television show. So uh, that's it for this book review. If you like what you see, be sure to check out the rest of the channel. I do lots of children's books. Um, sometimes I do nonfiction like this. Sometimes I do various different films. I do a bunch of uh, reviews like this. Mostly I'm focused on secular homeschooling. This book is kind of more of an interest, kind of a Halloween-y thing. Kids have different interests, so they might, if your kids are interested in hauntings, this is a good book to look at, particularly if they're middle school to high school age. So otherwise I do a mixture of kids travel stuff and more homeschooling stuff is on the way. We are a secular homeschooling kid family. I have a small child, so my daughter is still relatively young at this point, so we're getting there. So be sure to like and subscribe and check out the channel and see what I've got. Thank you.